If we directed you to view this section of the video series, it's because you're not a candidate for LASIK or PRK or even the EVO ICL. And we've decided that the removal and replacement of the natural lens inside your eye is a better option than to operate on the cornea. First, review the section on LASIK and the phacic IOL. Because the realistic expectations, the limitations, as well as the side effects and some of the risks and complications are similar to clear lens extraction. Now, the goal of this procedure is to reduce your dependence on glasses or contact lenses. It's important to realize that, again, it's a surgical procedure and it's not perfect. So even after we remove the lens inside your eye and replace it with a plastic lens, the results will be close, but not perfect. So everyone going into this procedure must understand that in order to achieve our visual goals, the probability is that we will have to perform LASIK on one or both of the eyes in order to fine tune or adjust the vision to be more exactly where we want it to be. And that's the same for LASIK or PRK or even the ICL. The procedure is performed at our federally certified Ambulatory Surgery Center in Hayward using our dedicated implant surgery team. This operation is identical to a cataract procedure, which I and my team have performed well over 25,000 times. We will have an anesthesiologist at your side. You'll be awake during the procedure, but relaxed, and we perform the procedure under local anesthesia. It's the same as a cataract operation. We remove the lens of your eye and replace it with a special intraocular lens implant, which is a lens that goes inside your eye in the position where the natural lens was removed. Now obviously, this is an elective procedure and any elective procedure must be weighed against all of the side effects and potential risks and complications and the realistic expectations must be understood. Clearly, the safest alternative to surgery is to wear glasses or contact lenses and not to undergo surgery. But if you elect to have surgery, we know that surgery on your cornea, such as LASIK or PRK in your case, will not achieve our goal. And this is why we have directed you to this educational video. Now, we have lens implant choices. The lens that you choose will be dependent on your lifestyle and visual needs. We will certainly have plenty of time to talk about them between us to decide which is best for you. Most patients will choose the multifocal lens with astigmatism correction in the lens or the light adjustable lens because these are implants that give us the best option at both distance, intermediate, and near. Of course, there's no 100% perfect choice and no 100% perfect implant, but they're all excellent. It's important to realize that with any lens that you choose, and this is also true of LASIK or PRK, some people will need some glasses for some things some of the time. And again, LASIK fine tuning for one or both eyes may be necessary to achieve our goal following the clear lens extraction or the refractive lens exchange procedure. Let's discuss the side effects as well as the risks and complications of clear lens extraction. I like to categorize them in terms of intraoperative complications, that is, those that can occur at the time of surgery, or postoperative complications, that is, those that can occur following surgery. All of the risks and complications are rare, but they can occur, so I want you to know about them. Now, in order to fully understand some of these complications, let me explain a little bit more about the procedure. When we remove the lens of the eye, we purposely leave inside the eye a little part of the natural lens of the eye called the posterior capsule. This helps support the new implant that we place inside the eye. It's a very, very, very thin membrane. And sometimes during the course of the operation, the membrane tears a little bit and we cannot keep that membrane intact. Now if that occurs, sometimes a little part of the jelly in the back of the eye comes forward and we have to clean that up and that's called a vitrectomy. And we do that right at the time of the tear. 
Now sometimes, and this is very rare, but it can occur, a little piece of the lens can float back through that tear into the back of the eye and requires a more extensive vitrectomy that would need to be done by a special vitrectomy surgeon at another time and another location because I don't do that type of surgery. This is exceptionally rare, but I want you to know about the possibility. Now again, if this tear occurs in the posterior capsule, we may not be able to implant the lens that we had chosen. For example, if we had chosen a multifocal or an astigmatic toric lens implant, we may not be able to put that implant in the eye and may need to put an implant that corrects your vision at distance, but does not have the multifocality or the astigmatism correction in the lens. In very rare cases, it may not be safe to place an implant at all, and it may be necessary to wear a contact lens following surgery in order to achieve your very best vision. We generally perform the clear lens extraction or refractive lens exchange in patients who are farsighted. And those eyes tend to be smaller than the normal eye. And actually, a physically smaller eye has an increased risk of severe bleeding in the back of the eye at the time of surgery. Although, again, this condition is exceedingly rare, it can be devastating and result in the loss of the eye. Well, what about post-operative complications? Although technically not a complication, as we discussed before, the lens implant may not correct all of your farsightedness or astigmatism, and a LASIK touch-up may be necessary to fine-tune the vision. Even after the touch-up, it's possible that some people may need some glasses for some things some of the time. That is, there's no guarantee that the patient will be absolutely glasses-free all of the time at all distances. Additionally, there can be swelling in the back of the eye and the central part of the retina, which can cause blurry vision for a number of months following your procedure. And, in rare cases, it may not clear up and may result in permanently blurred vision. Again, this is very rare. The surgery can possibly result in swelling of the cornea in the front of the eye. Again, this usually clears up within a few months, but may require a partial thickness corneal transplant in order to resolve the swelling. A retinal detachment may occur. That is when the retina, which is like the film in the back of a camera, peels off the back wall of the eye and needs to be repaired by a retina specialist. Generally, this results in excellent vision, but if the retinal detachment is severe, it can result in the permanent loss of vision. Additionally, Infection can be introduced at the time of surgery or occur in the early post-operative period. This may require the use of antibiotic drops and possibly injections of antibiotics directly inside the eye to fight the infection. Usually, patients recover excellent vision following post-operative infection. But, and in the exceptionally rare case, this can result in permanent loss of vision, or again, even loss of the eye. I'm happy to say that in over 25,000 lens extractions that I've performed in association with my cataract surgery and my dedicated team, as well as clear lens extractions in association with my team in my federally certified ambulatory surgery center, I've had no severe complications. However, in 25,000 cases, there have been a few cases of retinal detachment and a few infections but none which have resulted in significant loss of vision and certainly not any cases of loss of the eye. So in general, although lens extraction can have associated complications, they are not only very rare, but generally mild when they do occur. If they occur, they most often do not result in serious vision loss or loss of the eye. Now, I know that this is a lot of information to absorb in a short period of time, which is why I like the video format, so you can go back and review this video multiple times with your friends and family, and use the outline which I provided for you, and take notes with any questions or concerns that you have. I know that there are some potentially frightening risks and complications. When we meet, we'll talk about all of your questions and concerns and come to a decision as to which procedure is right for you and which implant choice is the right implant for your needs. Again, with respect to the risks and complications, 
They can and they do occur. But it's good to know that they're very, very rare and generally mild. Although I cannot guarantee you a perfect result or a risk-free procedure which has no complications, I will do the best possible surgery for you with attention to detail. I have performed over 25,000 cataract and clear lens procedures along with my dedicated surgical team in my federally certified ambulatory surgery center. My complication rate is very low, and when complications do occur, they tend to be mild, and certainly in my experience, I've had no cases of loss of the eye from a serious, severe complication.